Why don't we give these a shot? These are, I was interested by how challenging you found them. I intentionally made the last one a bit of a curveball, but the first two, we should be able to, well, yeah, interesting. Well, let's find out. You'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, let's have a look at number one. Now, a lot of us are sort of struggling to grapple with when there are fractions, wait, do I multiply everything by a number? Or do I leave some bits out? Let me try and explain, because I just thought of a, what I hope is a helpful way to explain it. Let's think about, because this is algebra, like that's confusing, let's just think about numbers, because we can deal with numbers. If I showed you something like this, I think we can all agree that that's true. Now, how does it work if we maintain the equation but start to muck with it in the same way that you have to muck with this in order to solve it. Okay, so an example would be, what if I wanted to multiply by four? Okay, now one of the questions I got was, if I multiply by four, do I multiply, well I get that the right hand side, that'll become four x over four, but do I multiply one of these or both of these? If it's one, which one? So how is it going to work? Let me see if I can illustrate it over here. If I multiply the right hand side by four, we know that becomes 20, okay? Now, if I only multiply one of the objects over here by four, watch what happens. Let's just try this one. Three times four, of course, is? Now, if I just left the two as it were, well, that's not, right? Two plus 12 is not 20, yeah? In fact, what you've got is you've got to take this and also multiply it by four, and then it's true. Does that make sense? Now, this is very closely related to, but not the same as this. And this is where I think the confusion arises. This is also true. Do you agree? But I'm going to do this multiply by 4 thing again, right? Oh, same color. If I multiply the right hand side, it becomes 24. Now look closely. There are two objects over here. Do I multiply them both by 4? Well, watch what happens. If I multiply this one by 4, I'll get 8. Yeah? Now if I multiply this by 4 as well, it will become 12. But 8 times 12 is not 24. 8 times 12 is 96. So in fact, that 3 stays put, which is weird, isn't it? This one multiplies, but not the other one. I could do it again. I'll explain why in a second. Um, suppose, I mean, I said let's try multiplying the 2 by 4, and that's what gave you 8. What if I multiplied the 3 instead? Uh, I've done the right hand side, let's change that. 3 times 4 is 12, right? What happens to this 2? Do I multiply that by 4 as well? No. Well, no, because 8 times 12, This we just did this, right? If I multiply that one, then you don't multiply the other to make it true. Now, here's the question. Why over here, and it's just numbers, right? Like, you guys are telling me it's right or it's wrong. Why on this side do I have to multiply both pieces by 4? Well, or three. Whereas over here, you actually have to choose. Do this one, or do this one, but if you do both, you're kind of stuffed. What's the difference? So the obvious difference is the um, operation between keys, right? So addition. Hi, are you looking for someone? Eliza. Yeah, sure, sure. The obvious uh, difference is that there's addition versus multiplication. So why then do I do it for this one, but not for this one, and not the other way around? How are you going to remember next time? Oh, look, um, there's a minus in there. So therefore, I've got to multiply both of these guys by whatever number I choose. Versus if I change that to uh, times, you don't. Here's what I would suggest you think about. This left hand side over here, 2 times 3, it's really one object. It's 6, right? 6 here. So when you multiply 2 times 3 by 4, you have to do it once because it's one object, right? Whereas over here, these two guys are well and truly separate, right? Just like over here, they are separate. So you have to multiply each one independently, otherwise, you saw it didn't work, right? Um, if you want to think about it this way, again, because you've got two separate terms, that I, I can't collect them in any way, right? So therefore you have to treat them as separate. So you have to multiply each one by four or whatever number you chose, okay? If you're ever unsure, just give it a go with numbers, right? And see what happens. 
if you don't get something at the end and you've, you're not sure about it, well, you can substitute and see if it works out. Now, I said four. What's a better number to choose to multiply by? What do you guys think? I think you're going to have to multiply by 56, yeah. which is a big number, okay? But it's not as bad as uh, the most common answer, which is 224. I've seen people look at an equation like this, and they choose to multiply by that number. Where do you think I got that from? I just multiplied 7 by 8 by 4. Good job, just walking in. Okay. Um, 7 times 8 times 4 is 224. At least it is if I did point numbers. Yes. Okay. Now you don't need to multiply by a number that big. I mean, you can if you want, but you don't have to. Why not? Didn't go well. Yeah, 56 is fine. We're looking for a lowest common multiple. In fact, anything that 8 goes into. 4 also goes into, so that's why you actually sort of don't need to worry about it. Okay. Once you multiply everything by a better number, I'll just show you what the next line is, and I think you guys can work from there. I think that's the hardest part. This will become 8 lots of that, this will become 7, and this will become uh, 56 is what I multiply by, right? Uh, 14. X. That's what you'll end up with. So I guess from there I'm going to, that's going to become 24, um, I'm going to subtract it across, will be giving negative 10x, negative 10x, and then you divide through by negative 10, which gives you 7 over 10. Wait, why do you do 56? Why did it make it Yeah, so um, let me write in, if I had 56 lots of this, and 56 lots of that, and 56 lots of this, um, you can see 56 divided by 7 is 8. 56 divided by 8 is 7. And 56 divided by 4 is 14. Bless you. So that's where it went. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, are we okay with this one? Since we spent lots of time on one, I might not go on that too much. Uh, now question three. Question three. What actually do you think is hard about this question? Because there's something a little bit weird about it. figuring out which one is your A and B. Yeah. This question, right? Is, um, is the opposite of when you get given a triangle with exactly one side, exactly another side, and exactly the included angle, you're like, oh, well, these are the three numbers I have to put in, and you can't, it's hard to screw it up. Whereas here, I've given you lots of information, and you actually have to pick and choose which one you need, and you can actually get it wrong. For example, you could pick two sides, and then you could pick the angle that's not between them, and then you'll get the area of some other triangle, not this one. Okay. So let's just quickly look at, um, Sandy, was this your yeah. yeah. Let's look at the numbers she picked. 5 times 6.5. So we're going with this one and this one, right? So therefore, the included angle, did she get it right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. She nailed it. Now, your working might be completely different because there's three different ways you can work this area out. You could have picked, instead of 6.5 and 5, you could have picked 6.5 and 7.7, .7, right? If you did that, you'd pick a different angle. Which one? The included one, which is 40. Now just quickly, unless you already did this, quickly go ahead and verify. If you put half A, B, sine C in with uh, these sets of numbers instead, I think you may actually get something off by a decimal place. You might get, did someone get like 16.2 or 16.0? Or did it land on 16.1? You want to get it? Just under, yeah. Um, the reason why you get something that's slightly different is because I've actually rounded these numbers here. Um, that's why I had some working because I had to work out what they're actually supposed to be. I could just make these up. Yes. Um, when I picked the numbers, I picked 83 because it was the biggest angle, and I thought, "Is that No. So here's the thing. If I change the question to uh, this, you can still solve it, just in this way that I just mentioned using these three. So um, one of the lovely things about this, if you remember this comes actually from, um, this is related to the sine rule, right? And the sine rule looks like this, if you remember your formula sheet. And there's actually a third one over here, which we, we like, we never really use this one. We're like, two's enough, okay? But the point is, it works all the way around. Every single version is exactly the same. We call that symmetrical. Okay. 